Today I'd like to explain to you a new way of conceiving dictionaries, what we're calling at Camusi molecular lexicography. Now, what we're trying to do at Camusi is to build a full matrix of human expression across time and space. And our goal is really to capture every word in every language. Now, of course, that's a huge goal and we'll never quite get there, but it's the target that we're aiming for. Our guiding principle is that this should be free for everybody's knowledge needs, for what they need to know about languages, their language or other languages. And also we are working to produce extensive and, and rich data for advanced language technologies, for a great many languages, for things like machine translation and speech recognition. So I'll briefly compare traditional lexicography, the writing of dictionaries, with what we're talking about with molecular lexicography. Let's look at what we think of as a word, something like star, which we'll define as a shining object in the sky. Well, if we start to think about what is a star, we realize quite quickly that there's a lot more depth to it than just this word in the definition. It has meaning, it has a shape or shapes, it has a sound, and it also has history and geography where it's spoken. And so what we start to see is that each word is really a collection of facts. So beneath the notion of meaning, there's, there's the definition, but there are also usage examples, synonyms, antonyms, a whole bunch of other things we won't go into. When it comes to shape, if we've got a different sense of the word star, as in performance lead actor, we've got stars, starred, starring, and these are things that a computer would need to find or a student would need to find and be able to find under the right definition. History includes things like etymology, words that are related to the current term, words that come from this current term, like starstruck comes from the Hollywood definition of star. Geography includes things like dialect and localisms. For example, it's what we in the U.S. call a traffic light in South Africa as a robot. And sound includes things like accents, homophones, things like wind, wind, and wind, and things where the same spelling differs, like executor and executor, which are two very different concepts. And each of these facts can themselves be linked to other facts within other words in other languages or within the same language. For example, both Etoile in French and Yota in Swahili share the meaning of a shining object in the sky with the English word star, although none, none of the other features of shape, sound, history, geography. And if you visualize it, you can actually see that what is a concept that's indicated by a spelling is actually works kind of like a molecule. It's got all of these little dots that configure themselves in unique ways within that one particular thing that we're calling a word. Those molecules may in turn bond with other molecules in various ways. For example, star, star, and star bonding in English with the same sound and the same shape. While Nyota and Etoile share a meaning with star, but have completely different sounds, completely different shapes, completely different histories. And the Hollywood sense of star might bond with extra as, as an antonym, somebody who's not the lead actor, but just a bit player. Essentially, molecular lexicography is a completely new way of, of conceiving how to document language. It hasn't even been attempted at this level for, for English, which is the best documented, best resource language out there. And while there is a lot of data for English that we'll be able to use in the system, for most languages spoken by billions of people, this sort of data just does not exist. It's in people's heads, but it's not in a digitized form. At Camusi, the platform that we've developed can really support lexicography for any language at the molecular level. We've developed the systems to gather this knowledge from people, both from scholars and from the people who speak the language. And we've developed ways to share this knowledge with people for free worldwide, both on computers and coming very soon on, on mobile devices. Where we've totally failed is money. We've been focused on doing the work. We have not been focused on raising funds. And now we're out of money, which is why we're asking for, for your support. Many people think that the idea of collecting data for so many languages is as uh, esoteric as collecting butterflies. But really, language data, the words that we use, is at the core of human experience. It's why we have big brains. It's how we interact with each other on a daily basis. It's how we transmit our knowledge from one generation to the next. That's what language data is. We're a legal nonprofit organization registered both in the US and in Switzerland, fully tax deductible. But our purpose for being is to make language tools, not to make money. And if you want to read about why we haven't been able to make any money, uh, you can check out this web address on kamusi.org slash bankrupt. Although we give away all of the data that we produce, we can't produce it for free, and this is a pretty bad business model. For example, some of the systems that we're developing elicit data from the crowd in seemingly simple ways. But to make these tools simple for people to use involves some incredibly complex and therefore expensive programming. So what we're building here is a basic knowledge resource. It's like building a library or building a school. But we don't have a Carnegie to support us. We don't have a Rockefeller. We don't have a Gates. So we need you to be our Bill Gates. In return, over time, you'll start getting a molecular dictionary for your language, as well as a data set to provide a lot of new core data for advanced technology applications for your language. 
your language will be linked at this molecular level to every other language that comes into the system. And you'll support the growth of data sets at this molecular level for every other language that comes into the system, even or especially for people who aren't in a position to pay for it themselves. There's no government ministry, there's no academic organization that has plans to build anything like this sort of resource. Because basically until now, nobody thought that it was possible. But now with the technology, with the methods and the model that we've developed, it really is possible to pursue this goal. We know that every word is overly ambitious, but it's a target that we think is worth aiming for and hope that you do too. I hope this helps you to understand what it is we're doing at Camusi that, that makes us different, that makes us unique, that makes us worthy of your support. Thanks for watching and thanks for helping.